garage. The vehicle we're featuring today, 1930 Indian Chief motorcycle. This was given to me 40 years ago. It was the biggest piece of junk. It had been crashed, had been ridden hard, put away wet. There was not one thing on this bike that wasn't broken. This was the definition of worn out, beaten to death. It stayed in the corner of this shop, well, pretty close to 40 years. Uh, I just never got around to it. One day I saw it sitting and I said, let's see what we gotta do to get this thing running. I wanted to keep it looking the same, but I wanted it to be mechanically perfect, which was almost impossible to do. As I said, every single part of this motorcycle was broken. Let's start with what it is. It's a 1200cc V-twin. Pretty powerful bike, about 40 to 45 horsepower, which is about what a Vincent Rapide was back in the day. So it's got plenty of torque. It's pretty light. It's under 400 pounds. Uh, it has what they call a total loss oil system. You fill this up with oil and you drive it until the oil just runs out and then you put more oil into it. The advantage is the engine is always getting fresh oil. The disadvantage is it's not particularly metered. Uh, it's a little inconsistent. Uh, this, this is gas tank here. This is gas here. And this also has a little plunger deal. So when it's cold, you could, you see, you would pull up some gas like this, and then you would squirt that directly into the carburetor to provide some fuel into the combustion chamber to fire it. This is an oil pump when uh, you're traveling at high speed. Is if you don't have enough to do on this bike, you reach down and open this tap under the tank, and then you pump that, and that would shoot a couple of do extra dollops of oil into the crankcase. It is a three-speed hand shift. It is a suicide clutch, a foot clutch. This is advance and retard on the ignition. This is uh, throttle. Now, originally, Indians, the throttle was over the end, the advance was over here. But I have so many motorcycles, you're riding, what, what, ah! and so I just put the throttle on this side. That's the only thing that's not stock. This is the only modern thing on the bike, this mirror, just a standard, usually a Harley accessory mirror. It's on an Indian, don't tell anybody. And I, I stuck it on there, and that's really the only modern convenience. This is one of the few life-saving devices on the vehicle. That being said, it's, it's a, a lot of fun to ride. It's a really unusual vintage machine. It's almost 90 years old. It takes some getting used to. It's not like a modern bike at all. You take your life in your hands every time you go out in it. But let's start with what was wrong with it, okay? Let's start at the back of the bike. Okay, this is your band brake here that goes around the rear wheel. That is the very definition of brake fade. If you have a Schwinn, you're probably familiar with this type of brake. It has a front brake, which is uh, kind of a brake in name only. It doesn't really brake, it just, it's more like a thing to work your hand a little bit. You know, it doesn't really, well, I mean, I think you can retard progress, but you really can't stop. Let me show you what happened with this bike as we took it apart. Let's start with the rear sprocket. Here's the rear sprocket. The teeth are completely worn out, as you can see. We had to find a new one. Here are the steering head bearings. Look at the steering head bearings, <laughs> completely chewed up. Look at the battery box. Apparently somebody, the, a battery must have split and the acid ate through it. Well, there you go, That's, that was the battery box. Uh, here's the magneto gear. This is what stopped the bike, I think, eventually. The teeth broke off the magneto gear so you couldn't get spark uh, to, the, uh, to the spark plugs. This engine was just about ready to grenade itself. The cylinder heads were cracked. You can see the hairline cracks in there. See the finger? Somebody put two different size pistons in it from, I, I don't know where they got them, but they weren't the correct pistons, so it must have vibrated itself to death before it grenaded. The transmission gears, every tooth is either bent or broken. I mean, it is unbelievable. Uh, okay, here you go. Here's some of the pieces. Look at this. Look, look at the flywheel. Okay, completely chewed up. It's, it, it was pretty unbelievable. Now, this primary case was filled with all hairline cracks, and there was no way to weld it without distorting it. This is where this company I've talked about before called Lock and Stitch comes in. It's Lock, the letter N, Stitch. Look it up on Google. And what they do is, let me show you how they fix things. 
Okay, see this? This is, you couldn't pull this apart. You turn this and it comes apart. See, what they do is they put a screw in it and they thread it. And then when they tighten it down, it seals it, and then they cut it off here. Like here's a piece that has been not welded together, but lock and stitch together. Can you see the outline of the screw there? Believe me, it makes it stronger than original. And we've, you know, I've got a Christie fire engine that has a 20 liter motor in it, and the piston is about the size of a paint can. It went through the side of the block. They fixed it using this lock and stitch technology. They just do an amazing job. They did the cylinder heads, they did this. Now, when you have a bike like this, you need to go to a specialist. We did as much as we could do, and we finally called a guy named Mike Thomas. He has a place called Kiwi Indian. Here's his website here. If you've got one of these Indians, boy, he's the guy to see. He found us the sprocket, the battery box. The 1930 Chief was a one-year only model that had a lot of changes in it and he helped us find all the pieces. Uh, we finally extended the kickstand of Kickstarter about three inches because <laughs> this thing was so impossible to kick the, the, the Kickstarter was too short. That was a design flaw back in the day. So we did that. He got us a magneto. He did the restoration on the mechanical part of this bike. We just gave him the bike. I said, Mike, see what you can do for this. After losing a lot of hair and pulling his nails out, it took about two years. He finally called me and said, it's ready. And of course, I was stunned. I figured I'd just given him a boat anchor. But no, he, he did the impossible. He did a wonderful job on this thing. So Mike Thomas, thank you very, very much. Go to his website. He's a real Indian motorcycle enthusiast, especially classic Indians. That's what he does. And there's enough of these around the country to keep him in business for the rest of his, rest of his life. This one, it was just as far gone as a motorcycle could possibly be. It just every, every single part of it was worn out or broken, but I, I didn't want to throw it away. And I think it looks kind of cool the way it is. You know, I've said this a couple of times, it's the kind of bike you can crash it and nobody will know. Did you crash today, huh? Uh, no, no. Because you can't really tell. Okay, you might break the Numera off, but other than that. But you know, he managed to get it going, put a set of tires on it, as you saw, he fixed the sprocket, fixed the cylinder head. Well, let's see if she starts. Put the clutch in. and you're tarred, put the clutch in, pull it in first gear. Now you have to open the throttle and let the clutch out as you're advancing the throttle and moving the, as, as you're advancing ignition and opening the throttle. Be careful with this leg because you'll knock it into second gear. So here we go. We're ready to pull away. So you advance the throttle on the throttle. The rear wheel is spinning. You want to change gears, shut throttle, put in clutch, put into second, open throttle slowly, release clutch, you're in second gear, third gear, put in the clutch, put it in third, shut throttle, open throttle, clutch, there you go, and continue motoring. There you go, pretty good. Basically pretty simple, not too bad. That gives you some idea how you, how, how you ride one of these. And you know, I kind of like Magneto bikes, because if you have a good Magneto, you don't have to worry about battery being dead or any of that. You know, Magnetos used to be great, and then they got cheaper in the 50s and 60s, and then eventually everybody went to the battery and coil type ignition with points. But with a really good mag, the mag gets a spark, it gets a spark to the plugs, and the thing fires and it runs. And that's basically all there is to it. So I think I'm about ready to take this thing out on the road. As I said, it's 90 years old, so anything could happen, which is always exciting. You know, you go, oh, is this going to be my last ride? What's, what's going to happen with this thing? You know, so modern stuff is just so dependable, you know. 
you know, this is like being with the wrong woman. You know, it's a lot of fun until something happens and you go, <laughs> what do we do? So uh, let me put on my jacket and my helmet and uh, we'll go for a spin. All right, let's do this. It's a big 1,200cc B-twin. And you know, no matter what error it is, 1,200cc to 1,200cc. And it's fast. I mean, it really is a pretty quick bike. You can scare yourself to death pretty good on this thing. You know, a bike like this, anytime you ride it and you're not dead or bleeding at the end of it, that's a pretty good ride. <laughs> that's the fun thing about this. You don't know what's going to happen. It's almost 100 years old. You've got metal fatigue. You know where the things are going to break. So it's, it's, it's a pretty exciting ride. And as you can see, it's a powerful bike and it rides nice. And the nice thing is you can crash it all day long and nobody's going to notice. Yeah. So that's, that's, the nice thing. <laughs> that's the nice thing about it. So I hope you enjoyed this nice unrestored original like piece of junk that I've had for 40 years and uh, it, it's a lot of fun and uh, if you ever, never get a chance to drive a suicide clutch with a hand shift uh, uh, don't you'll probably kill yourself we'll see you guys next week thanks Mm-hmm. <laughs>